Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Today, we are going to see how the EPR spectra recorded when the radicals are just created by a pulse laser light and how they differ from the steady state EPR spectra and what can we learn about the mechanism of the radical production. So, here broadly the theme will be electron spin polarization in photochemical reaction. Before you understand what is the meaning of this term is, let us see some examples. So, here the steady state EPS spectrum of this particular system is shown here that we have acetone mixed with isopropanol as a solvent and we sign UV light and then light is on all the time. We record the EPR spectrum the way normally we do. This is the steady state EPS spectra recorded under continuous photolysis. The spectra looks like this and then from the intensities of these various high profile lines we can definitely attribute it to this radical. So, the chemical reaction is this absorbs light. So, this must be going to the excited state and in the excited state some reaction is taking place. This is the isopropanol and the radical that we see here this radical this protons give uh, the major 7 lines EPR spectrum and this little spreading comes from this proton here. So, here the reaction is that this hydrogen atom gets trans abstracted by this to produce this 2 radicals of this kind. Now, this is the overall reaction acetone is excited uh, by the light and it abstracts a hydrogen atom from the alcohol. Now, to get the EPR spectrum of this radical just at the time they are created by laser light, we have a pulse laser which is repeated again and again. So, we look at the microwave signal and try to get a snapshot of the voltage at a given time after the laser pulse and then average this voltage after every laser pulse to improve the signal to noise ratio using a box car averager. So, we get a spectrum that will be characteristic of the whatever it is at a given time after the laser pulse. So, we call this the time resolved EPR spectrum of the transient species. Now, that is the way the comparison between the steady state EPR spectrum under continuous photolysis and this is the time resolved EPR spectrum under a pulse laser light. The second one was recorded at a time 0.5 microsecond after the laser pulse and one can see that the line positions are matching perfectly well that is we are getting the same radical here even in the and that nothing new is happening so far the chemistry is concerned photochemistry is same, but the EPS spectra are quite different. when we do the experiment in the time resolved fashion. Different in what sense? The spectrum is actually the coming from the same radical, it is the same thing happening there. So, the line positions are the same, only the intensities are very different.
That is important. That, that it doesn't produce any different radical. Radical is the same. We only get different intensities, and that intensities are very difficult to understand from the way we have understood the EPR spectrum. That they must follow the usual Pascal triangle type of uh, intensity ratios among the various hyperfine lines, or similar type of relative intensity ratios. So, this spectrum shows that some levels are getting selectively populated some levels of the Zeeman split line. So, this particular transition involves a pair of Zeeman line, this involves some other pair of Zeeman line that depends on the nuclear spin state. So, some are populated more than the other, sometimes even it is other way around. So, if I have set up the spectrometer properly to get the absorption spectrum in this fashion, the way signal goes up, that is then these lines are showing absorptive signal and these lines are showing opposite of absorption and, and opposite of absorption means what? It has to be only emissive in nature and that is very unusual because the normal distribution of spins in a pair of Zeeman level will be this is more and less here. So, we get a net absorptive signal in this kind. So, when you see emissive signal which is going downwards means these levels are more populated than this one. That is the only way one can explain this observation. So, we call this type of radicals which are produced in a selectively populated spin states or we call it electron spin polarized state. That is see some levels are selectively populated. Electron spin polarization is the phenomenon we are observing here and therefore, the spin populations at different Z1 level do not follow the Boltzmann distribution. So, then we can define a quantity called polarization which is defined as the number of spins in the beta level and number of spin the alpha level n alpha and n beta then this is the way you can define the polarization n beta minus n alpha by the total number of spin. The advantage of this is that the EPR signal intensity depends on see among other things the population difference. If these two are equal we will not get any signal. So, intensity is proportional to the polarization. So, when polarization is positive I get a net absorptive signal and polarization is negative I can get emissive signal. Now, the first time such signal was seen was way back in 1963 when these two scientists Fessen and Schuller were actually irradiating liquid methane by an electron pulse. I suppose that uh, this electron beam was breaking this molecule and producing hydrogen atom and what they saw here is the two lines of hydrogen atom one is here other is there they have exactly opposite phase. Please note that these are not the first derivative EPR signal, they are second derivative EPR signal. So, when you are going down and here the high field line going up has exactly opposite phase. That is normally hydrogen atoms would give two lines at a distance of let us say 509 gauss or so. So, here the intensity is this kind that means the population is exactly opposite for this pair of transition. They even did the experiment with deuterated methane, so that they could produce deuterium atom and deuterium atom has got nuclear spin of 1. So, if I equal to 1, this should give 3 intense line of this kind equal intensity with a relative intensity of 1 is to 1 is to 1. Instead what they found was that this is negative, this intensity is not very big and this is the opposite one here. So, this is negative intensity, this is positive, but small this is the more positive one, this is something else. So, this is the first observation something unusual was happening and they wrote in their paper that for the moment the cause of the inversion remains unknown. People probably did not pay much attention, but soon similar observation was seen in NMR experiment. The only condition was that 
when some NMR signal of a reacting system was recorded, one could see such unusual signal, there is some absorptive emissive signal appears there. We will see some example soon. Before that, I would like to point out that one does not necessarily have to go to time resolved repair experiment, even in steady state also one can see similar behavior. Here, this is the xanthon molecule and a continuous photolysis was done in isopropanol and this is the steady steady pure spectrum. You can see the derivative lines here. Now, but the way the intensities are, you can compare with the expected spectrum, the similar spectrum that see this bunch of line is sort of matching with this one, but corresponding bunch of lines absolutely not seen and they are buried in the noise level. In other words, the left to right symmetry is lost here. So, intensity sort of goes down on this side from right to left, which is not consistent with our EPS spectrum that we discussed as a first order spectrum, where the it will be perfectly symmetric from middle to outside. So, here the intensities are more on the high field region than low field region. There are Therefore, it also means that some lines are not following Boltzmann distribution. So, okay. here is another comparison between steady state EPR and time resolved EPR. Parabenzoquinone photolyzed in isopropanol in a steady state UV light. So, one can get the EPR spectrum of this kind, and this is the radical that you have attributed to. this radical and the reaction on this is parabenzoquinone plus isopropanol gives this parabenzoquinone radical that is what is seen here let us say that is all we see we do not know what else is forming there there is no evidence of any other uh, signal in the spectrum. So, here again this parabenzoquinone structure is this and if this is the radical that is formed there, then this is abstracting a hydrogen atom from the solvent and producing this radical. All right, Let us see you now time zero spectrum of this one here. It is the same experiment is done in the time result fashion and the spectrum that is seen here is recorded after 0.5 microsecond after the laser pulse. So, here this lines which are marked with a little symbol here, they actually match with the spectrum of this radical C S 3 whole 2 C O H. They here little here, not, this is not seen, but one could presumably believe that partner of this must be here. So, that means, this time result spectrum shows that the other radical is this one a steady state spectrum did not show this. And this doublet, this doublet and this doublet they are the three doublet corresponding to here this radical. You notice the scale here this much is 5 gauss and here this much is 20 gauss naturally this con compressed here. So, first thing is that time result EPR spectrum gives evidence of presence of both the radicals, but that is not so interesting. Interesting part is that the appearance of the signal all the lines are in the downward phase. That means, all the lines are appearing in the emissive fashion. That is where the main difference between this system and this system. So, something unusually different in the two cases, even though the chemical reaction is the same. This hydrogen atom goes from here to there, here also I could write that this hydrogen atom goes from here to this to produce this radical. So, chemically there is no difference, there is some difference in the way 
the spins are populated in the two cases. Just to show that indeed these lines are coming from the semiquinone radical, this, this region expanded and you can see clearly that that matches exactly well with the spectrum due to this. Now, I said earlier that when this first 1963 observation of Hessen and Schuller on hydrogen atom giving these two lines in the, this opposite fashion, many people may not have paid any attention, but now later early 60s the NMR experiment showed lots of such signal here. Let us see one of them. This is the NMR spectrum of this chemical reacting system where acetyl peroxide is reacting with this solvent here. Peroxides are known to break down when they are heated and then they undergo some chemical reactions. And I see here this is ethane, this is CH3 Cl, the L has come here. So, absorption so spectrum here is all going up, these are going down. So, that these are absorptive signal, this is absorptive signal, but this signal from this molecule and from this signal from this molecule, they are coming in the opposite sense. They are emissive in nature. Another example, here thermal decomposition of propionyl peroxide in hexachloroacetone. When it is heated, propionyl peroxide breaks down and it does some chemical reaction to produce ultimately this molecule here, CH3, CH2, Cl. CH3, CH2, Cl, the NMR spectrum of this is should be very simple to predict. this the, there are three protons here, two protons there. So, this will be split into quartet due to this and this will be split into triplet due to this one. So, this type of thing other one will be this type of universe. spectrum is expected there. Now, what is seen here is quite different. So, this, this is the expected NMR signal from uh, arising from this C S 2 protons, but what is his, what appears here is that the first two lines are absorptive and other two lines are emissive. And here for the triplet, this line is absorptive, this line is emissive and middle line is almost 0 intensity. It is very peculiar in that indeed. So, then lots of such experiments started appearing and then people remember the yes in 1963 and Schuller indeed saw the hydrogen atom spectrum appearing in the opposite phase. Then there are a lot of activities to understand why such things are happening, what is so special going on in such cases and one gets unusual uh, NMR signal as well as EPR signal. So, here selective population of various nuclear spin levels are taking place here. That is why some levels give positive signal and some other levels give emissive signal. So, this new phenomenon was termed as chemically induced dynamic electron polarization for polarization of electron spin and for polarization of nuclear spin this used to be called chemically induced dynamic nuclear polarization. Even now these terms are used by and large they mean that the electron spins are polarized and they are in a dynamic state in a sense that they do not stay there forever. The electron spin lattice relaxation process always tries to restore the Boltzmann distribution. Similarly, in case of NMR spin also, the NMR spin lattice reduction mechanism tries to restore the spin population to the thermal distribution. Now, since in the early days almost all the examples were seen to arise from chemical processes, that is the either NMR signal was recorded for chemical reacting system or EPR signal was recorded at the time of creation of the radical. So, this used to be called chemical induced dynamic electron polarization or chemical induced dynamic nuclear polarization. And a general term was given as chemically induced magnetic polarization to which will be uh, uh, inclusive of both of these terms. Then it turned out that any interaction which are spin selective can give rise to spin polarized radicals 
and it was found out that involvement of chemical or photochemical processes is not always necessary. Some photophysical processes can be also electron spin selective and they can give rise to spin polarization. So, then a new term was coined and it is called electron spin polarization or ESP. So, today we are going to learn how this sort of electron spin polarization arises. ESP in photochemically generated transient radicals. So, radicals can be generated either by light that will bring the molecule excited state or it can be electron beam the wave has sent in solar saw the hydrogen atom this involves radiolysis or one can heat the sample which will be thermolysis. Now, in these two cases reaction usually takes place in the ground state in the excited state will be of course, excited state if the light is involved. Now, this is a general types of EPR signal that can appear. Let us take an example of methyl radical. Methyl radical EPR spectrum will be 3 protons. So, it will be looking like this 1, 3, 3, 1. Notice that I will be always drawing the EPR spectrum in this fashion either absorptive or emissive. We will not use derivative representation because this experiment involves recording the spectrum using the direct detection method and that does not use any magnetic field modulation. So, I can get directly the appearance of the spectrum and from there I can decide whether it is absorptive or emissive. Now, in the steady state condition whatever the intensity of these lines are this will follow 1 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1, but the actual intensity will depend on the Boltzmann distribution among the various hyperfine levels. So, this is the absorptive signal at thermal equilibrium. Okay. So, these are the possibilities that we can encounter. One is that all the lines get inverted and intensity is much more than the steady state intensity. So, we say that P the polarization is negative and value of this one magnitude wise much much bigger than the equilibrium value of the polarization. And this otherwise this shape is exactly same as what is seen in the steady state mode. So, relative intensity is still 1 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. So, we say polarization is hyperfine independent this is the emissive nature. Other possibility is that I get absorptive polarization where P is greater than 0 at the same time P is much bigger than the equilibrium value. So, I get a huge signal, but the relative intensities are such that they are same as the thermal population. So, again this intensity distribution is hyperfine independent. A third possibility is what I showed you for acetone isopropanol system, the some lines are emissive, other lines are absorptive. So, it could be emissive absorptive and emissive on the low field region, absorptive on the high field region and hyperfine dependent now. See different hyperfine line have different densities or it could be other end also that low field lines are absorptive and high field lines are emissive. So, these are the various possibilities in general one can expect. What are the general things we have seen so far is that two types of spectra can be seen. One is that hyperfine independent polarization here, either emissive or absorptive, the one type of situation. And second situation is one of emission, other half enhanced absorption, AE or EA, depending upon the hyperfine line. And also, thing which I may not have yet attention earlier is that any of this reaction what we have here or here, the starting compounds are always in singular state, diamagnetic state, there is no unpaired electron. So, when the reaction takes place, there cannot be one radical, there has to be two radicals produced at the same time. 
otherwise you cannot get this sort of radical formation from nowhere. Since everything was single state, when the sum either bond breaks or electron goes from one to the other, there will be always pair of radicals. So, what was seen here, see that solvent radical, the acetone ketal radical and the semiquinone radical both have the same sense of polarization, here both are emissive. This is the summary is that in photolytic generation there will always be a pair of radicals. One may or may not be able to detect both of them for whatever reason one radical may be more reactive than the other, but there will always be two radicals produced at the same time. And the two type of polarization that we have seen here is both radicals in the same phase either both are absorptive or emissive independent of high profile line or one half emission other half enhanced absorption either A e or E a. This is the background of observation. Now, let us see can, can we understand why these signals are appearing in this fashion. So, what are the mechanisms of electron spin polarization? So, we make a few key I would not say assumption, but accept the laws of nature without questioning because they are so fundamental that they are always supposed to be true. One of them is this in an isolated system the total angular momentum of a system is conserved in all processes. So, that there cannot be any creation or destruction of angular momentum out of no hair, there has to be somebody to do that. So, all photophysical and photochemical processes will conserve the total angular momentum. So, we take it to be a fundamental law of nature and see how much we can uh, progress based on this. Okay, let us first consider this mechanism single phase hyperfine independent polarization, where the example was the paramenzoquinone reacting in isopropanol giving rise to these two radical here. Uh, this give emissive spectrum, this also give emissive, both are in emissive phase. This is single phase hyperfine independent polarization. So, we can just symbolically write that instead of this particular reaction, let us say I have got A and B molecule reacting in the presence of light producing a radical number 1 and radical number 2 and both are in emissive polarization. So, radical 1 therefore, this is got the 2 G 1 level, upper levels are mostly populated so that it gives emissive signal. Radical 2 again the upper level is mostly populated compared to lower level, so this also gives emission. So, then all the electrons are paired when A and B were in the ground state and when the radicals are formed, I want, you see suddenly that radical 1 has alpha spin state now, radical 2 has also alpha spin state. So, here all electrons are paired and suddenly these two radicals have two electrons unpaired. So, everything was paired in the beginning and then these two are unpaired also parallel to each other, both are alpha spin. How is it possible? Apparently, there is this law of conservation of angular momentum is breaking down. So, there is something interesting going on there. So, if you go back now from this radical to one step backward, that molecule A let us say absorbs light goes to excited state S1. This is the scheme we are starting with from the observation. Our observation is that this has got alpha spin state this also is alpha spin state. So, if the reaction A only A absorbs light and it goes to excited state and the reaction takes place there. So, if the reaction is in the single state of this one, well let us say all spins are paired and here of course, all spins are paired, then it just cannot produce a pair of radical with parallel spin. So, this is therefore, single state cannot react to produce this one that important conclusion one can draw immediately. How about triplet state now? Suppose A is in the triplet state, triplet state what shall I write here? Uh, I will write in a moment.
So, triplet state this being alpha and alpha it is not difficult to visualize that this could also be alpha alpha that is this is one of the triplet. Then the, the angular momentum in terms of the number of spins that are unpaired is perfectly satisfied. So, we can therefore develop our reaction scheme in this fashion that it is not the single state of A that is reacting it is a triplet state of A that is reacting and triplet particularly not all the three triplet level, but only triplet A with alpha alpha spin state. So, then it reacts with B and produce two radicals A and B everything is conserved here and both of them come in the emissive polarized state. So, similarly if the triplet beta beta reacts excited state this is the triplet also I will get a radical 1 which is will have beta spin state radical 2 will also have beta spin state. So, this will give a polarization which will be seen in the form of enhanced absorptive signal for radical A and radical B. So, this is the mechanism which must be taking place to produce a polarized signal in this case. So, you see that how the involvement of various uh, photophysical processes are necessary to have this sort of polarized spectrum here. Uh, turning it other around how much you can learn about the involvement of various photophysical processes when you see EPS spectrum of this kind. Now, the triplet level as the name suggests there are three levels present there. Now, why does only one level react? for example, to give emissive signal only one of them is reacting here not all why not all three of them. Why does the process choose only one level also what happens with the T 0 level here the two extreme cases I said here alpha, triplet of alpha alpha will produce two radicals in the emissive phase if the beta beta is reacting then this will produce two radicals in the absorptive phase enhanced absorptive phase. So, this is the question still remains to be answered. Here I have shown the three triplet level since the since the experiments are carried out in the spectrometer in the presence of magnetic field one could write that the triplet state also will experience Zeeman interaction and T 1, T 0, T minus 1 will be 3 Zeeman split line of the triplet level. So, what does intersystem crossing process do is to bring this singlet excited state to this three triplet sub levels, but I uh, the experiment shows that only one of them is reacting the T plus 1 state is reacting. Here the spin states are alpha 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 beta plus beta alpha and beta beta the way the polarization of these two radicals are there this is the one which reacts. So, is it likely that reactivity of the three triplets are different? That is not very likely. Why should the reactivity depend on whether it is T 1 or T 0 or T minus 1? So, that is not a very likely reason. Then how about this intersystem crossing rate? If the rates are different that could explain this behavior that may be all three levels are not equally populated. So, we hypothesize that may be the ISC rates are different for different triplet level. See with that assumption one can justify the complete mechanism in this fashion that molecule A absorbs light go to single state and intersystem crossing brings this molecule to triplet level, but not equally it brings selectively to one of the triplet level may be dominantly to one of the triplet level and reaction takes place in all the three triplets level, but the one which has got dominant population produces the radical. So, if S 1 goes to T plus 1 state selectively then it gives emissive signal, S 1 goes to T minus 1 state selectively it gives absorptive signal, but if it goes to T 0 then what happens? Since we are going to understand the whole mechanism in a qualitative fashion we just state here that 
S 1 to T 0 just does not take place which is not rigorously correct and a much better model to which looks into the detail intersystem crossing and the polarization in the two molecules will involve much more refined treatment. So, then this ad hoc approximation is not necessary we will be satisfied with this one right now that we get two types of spectrum either totally emissive or totally absorptive and they arise because of this. So, the conversion of a singlet to a triplet seems to create a unit of spin angular momentum again we are back to some other problem now we have been talking about the conservation of angular momentum, but when this process takes place S 1 to T 1 S 1 has no angular momentum spin angular momentum that is, but T 1 triplet has a 1 unit of spin angular momentum how is it created now what happened to the conservation of angular momentum rule. So, to understand that let us figure out what is causing the intersystem crossing process the perturbation is the spin orbit interaction I call H S O. So, in the presence of spin orbit interaction the spin and orbital angular momenta separately are not good quantum numbers the total angular momentum is conserved. So, we have let us say L and S this is the orbital and this is the spin angle momentum and this total you can give rise to J in the presence of H S O. So, this is conserved not this and this individually. So, there is a clue to this now that so when the intersystem crossing takes place in the presence of this perturbation then this singlet to psi triplet this may not be same for all three triplet level whether I have got T plus 1, T 0, T minus 1 this might be dependent on that and that might explain why we get this selective population among the three triplet level. Well just keep in mind that these triplets are the triplet of the first molecule which you get excited for example, here that is the mo molecule which goes excited is not the radical pair. So, a little more understanding will come if we try to see why this thing is possible that different level uh, triplet level may not be equally efficient in this intersystem crossing to take place. So, for that we have got triplet molecule has two unpaired electron. So, I could write the inter uh, spin orbit interaction in this fashion L 1 dot S 1 L 2 dot S 2. Now, this could be sim simply a little bit manipulated to write in this fashion now. Now, here you see the first term is symmetric L 1 plus L 2 S 1 plus S 2. So, the total spin and orbital angular momentum remains constant, but the second term is the difference of them L 1 minus L 2 S 1 minus S 2 that is the this is supposed to be conserved J has to be conserved not necessarily this and this. So, the difference shows that if one is changing the other must change in the opposite sense. So, singlet to triplet intersystem crossing means I am creating one unit of spin angular momentum. So, that can be compensated by having one unit of orbital angular momentum changing in the opposite sense. So, that is the key to this conserving, conserving the total angular momentum as well as try to justify why this could be different for different triplet level. So, most molecules are not spherical and hence orbital motions along certain directions will be favorable to changes in the orbital angular momentum. So, the molecules are not spherical let us say a quinone itself. So, it is the carbonyl group which is the reactive center. So, the, the way electrons can move about in this direction electron can move uh, much more freely let us say than movement of electron in this direction. So, this movement that I am showing by hand is sort of nothing but the orbital angular momentum. So, different direction therefore, molecule can have different type of 
orbital angular momentum and some direction it may be more efficient than the other direction. So, coming back to this the some direction this L can change more easily than some other direction. So, these three triplet level are molecular triplet level based on the coordinate of the molecule one can think of that uh, along that direction. Then this triplet level can be connected to molecular triplet and then this orbital angular momentum change in the molecular coordinate system can be dependent on the which direction we choose. So, by arguing in this fashion we can therefore, see that the intersection crossing rate may not be same for all three triplet level and therefore, that is the key to the appearance of the selective population of the triplet state and then finally, the reaction taking place there to produce the polarized radical. Okay. So, let us summarize this single phase hyperfine independent polarization. What is happening there? Key point is that all three triplet levels are not equally populated by intersystem crossing. So, an asyntropic intersystem crossing is taking place. And so, the triplet that itself is produced in the beginning it is, is polarized triplet because this also does not follow the Boltzmann distribution. So, one might call this as the photophysical origin of electron spin polarization and then electron spin let us reduction will try to equalize the population here, but then if the reaction is competing with this spin large reduction process then the radicals can be produced with the spin selective manner. So, here again figuratively this thing is described here the let us say T 1 state is populated first selectively then this relaxation processes are that spin large relaxation within the triplet manifold. So, that this follows the Boltzmann distribution or Boltzmann distribution is restored within the triplet manifold. Now, the B molecule comes and reacts with this. If the reaction is faster or comparable to this rate, then this extra population of spins can be transferred to the radical. Therefore, the most important requirement is that chemical reaction must compete with the spin lattice relaxation of the triplet for generating radicals with electron spin polarization. The summary of the single phase hyperfine independent polarization is that reaction takes place in the triplet excited state first requirement. Then anisotropic ISC selectively populates either T plus 1 or T minus 1 state. And then first chemical reaction competing with the triplet spin lattice relaxation transfers the spin polarization of the triplet to the radical. The reaction rate must be rate constant must be comparable to the spin lattice relaxation rate constant of the triplet. Now, this is the condition that need to be satisfied, but to keep in mind that this is not easy to satisfy because this triplet spin lattice relaxation rate is of the order of 10 nanosecond at room temperature. So, the reaction has to be also comparably must be comparable to this time. So, not most not all reactions are such fast reaction usually electron transfer reaction or hydrogen ion transfer reactions are fast. Compared to that, the spin large selection of radicals mostly are in the microsecond range. So, that whatever you see the radicals are formed, at least they will maintain their spin polarization for several microseconds for the time zero appears spectrometer to record that. So, this mechanism, which primarily centered around the triplet state involvement of the photochemical reaction, is called the triplet mechanism of electron spin polarization. The characteristic feature of this is that both the radicals will give same type of spin polarization either totally absorptive or totally emissive. This does not depend on the nuclear spin state. The spectrum will be very much like the steady state spectrum, but either it will be going down or going up. Relative intensity will be same as uh, what one sees in the steady state EPR spectrum. So, with this we will stop and then in the next class we will take up the other spin polarization mechanism where one sees the appearance signal which is of this kind this or that. The nucleus spin dependent electron spin polarization what we saw in case of this I rubbed it out acetone isopropanol system.